Hey everybody, welcome back to the Torch Bears podcast. We've been away for a few weeks, had some craziness with free agency, contract negotiations, but we got some big news. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the newest member of the San Francisco 49ers, Joshua Dobbs. Hey, bang, bang, Niners gang. Man, free agency is crazy. Free agency is crazy. So yeah, you were hinting on it um, earlier, Beats. Since last time we talked, uh, free agency started March 15th, and how it works is, you know, that starts, that's a Monday. So the so at uh, noon, free agency begins, I believe. So the two hours leading up to noon um, is called tampering period. So basically where you're legally able to talk to other teams around the league, your agent can, you can. And then from there, it's just wide open game. So at the QB position, it's kind of like dominoes. Once one guy goes, a ton of guys go, and basically they fall from there. As the first week ended, Friday, I began some talks with San Francisco, um, talking with their GM, QB coach, um, head coach, and just talking about what the room would be, what the opportunity would be. I was also weighing a couple other options. And what people don't give about free agency is, it's so crazy that you literally have to keep your phone on at all times. Because you could get a call from your agent at 10 p.m., 10 a.m., 7 a.m., at any time. And it could be a huge call for you to sign with a team. If you miss that call, the team could go and sign another player, and then you end up losing your spot that you have had if you had just answered your phone. It's very simple. But all that to say, Monday talked with the San Fran staff, um, agreed to a deal, and felt like it would be the, the right place for me at this point in my career. Um, but what they've been doing, building there over the last couple of years, has been incredible. And I'm excited to get out to San Fran, join a couple familiar faces out there. One I'm really excited to see, and it's going to be a good time this upcoming season. Dobbs, I was texting you a little bit uh, leading up to free agency. What kind of anxiety or feelings are you getting when that first day comes around and you don't get a call? It's just weird, right? Like, like I know Beach, you're around us all the time, so you – but you also follow college recruiting. It's very similar to that per se. Like you feel like you'll have interest from certain teams, but you also like need them to call you to get that interest. So even though you're interested in teams, doesn't mean they're always interested in yourself and like vice versa. So it's weird, but you're not really anxious because you also see like now there's still really good players that aren't signed. So, you know, there's opportunities like you're just waiting for the right one to hit in order to sign and be at the right spot. When you did sign, all of Twitter exploded because you had a chance to team up with one of your college teammates. Tell me about that opportunity to maybe play with the guy that you slung the pig skin around with in college. Hey, I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm going to bring him on now because we got some, some hilarious stories from college. But the teammate I'll be joining in San Francisco was a five-star recruit right down the road from Tennessee, came and became one of the most famous and most fun players to watch at the University of Tennessee, not only for his catching and playmaking ability, but also because he would literally body DBs and put them in in the front row of the bleachers because of his blocking and his effort on the edge. People call him a dog. He's known for his Hail Mary. And in another reality, he's probably a Super Bowl MVP. So let's just bring him on right now. We got the man, the myth, the legend, Juwan Jennings. What's up, my guy? Welcome to the Yo. pod, man. Let's clap it up for Juwan. What's good, brother? What's good, man? I appreciate you having me on. Bro, we're teammates again. How crazy is that? You tell me, man. This is a dream come true all over again. Look, who knows how it Who knows, like, the time I met you, bro, and I came in as a quarterback and – now we're gonna be teammates on San Fran. This is this is what we do, man. We like to win, and it's gonna be fun because I love I love the way you work, and now I can't wait to work alongside you again, bro. Bro, them lifting stories of me and you were that's probably like one of my favorite memories. Man, I was probably thinking about the same thing. Like Tennessee, that was some of the worst, the hardest workouts I ever had in my life. So when Juwan got to campus with my little brother, and I think that's where our relationship really started because we would be in the same squat rack and the boys would have about 365 on their back, 415 squatting that thing 10 times. And me and Juwan were self-squatting each other. And it was like, hey, bro, I'm going to need you right here. I got to get I got to get eight. It's like, hey, Juwan. (laughs) It was like partner squatting. We're going up and down. Got lost and screaming at us. But that's where where the best relationships were made. 
Straight up. Straight up. That's, it just, that's, just, that's just a lot. That's a lot right there. Come on, though. That's like a whole lot of shit right there. And it's just back to back to back to back to back. One, two, set three, set four. So we know it's at, you know, it's almost gone. <laughs> we did that, though. Yeah. We, we did, did that. We did that. We got strong. We got strong. Uh, well, I do want to know, because I don't think I ever asked you, talk about, like, yeah. when you got this, like, you, you're a highly rated QB, but obviously when you came to school, they ended up moving you to receiver. Like, talk about mm-hmm. what those conversations were and, like, talk just about that transition, what it looked like from your end. Man, it was just a decision on when I could play. And uh, I didn't want to move the receiver. You know, I wanted I wanted to play quarterback. I wanted to be able to get some Wildcats. That's actually, like, I've just, you know, always been competitive like that. Like, just knowing that I'm always trying to be on the field. <laughs> but, hey, I know I can impact, you know what I'm saying, for quarterback too, but – um, going to receiver was just uh, fun. Uh, to me, it was just like going to be able to play seven versus seven. And, you know, back when I was a quarterback, you know, Dodge, you know, like, it's, you're not a receiver, but it looks fun out there, though. So yeah. now I'm out there. Yeah. Now I'm out there and I'm catching odds, and it's like, I love it. I love it. The first time I ever saw you play was the Orange and White game where you were playing quarterback, and you tore it up. You dominated that game. What happened when you first found out that you were going to be transitioning to wide receiver? And, and did you feel like slighted at all because you had just done so well in the Orange and White game? And, you know, it was a lot of emotion going into that. But uh, at the end of the day, all I wanted to do is just get to the NFL. So um, I knew if I could, I knew I wasn't going to be able to play quarterback. Uh, Don, he earned that position. And uh, he's one of the best quarterbacks Tennessee's ever had, you know, and especially the last decade. He's Number one in my book. But as we say, you did ball. I know uh, Coach DeVore called that uh, that that QB boot. You saw that fall cross open. You put, you put your foot on the ground. You took that thing for 65. I was like, oh, this boy's a dog. I don't this know, yo. I don't know. What, I don't even know. I don't even know. I had rewatched it on uh, TV, and uh, I saw K-Man was talking. I was like, I scored while he was talking on the TV copy, and I'm like, man, that's so cool. Like, like that actually happened, but – yeah, no, we got, you know, we got endless stories. And endless. All right, we're going to talk about one story on the field and then one story off the field. And I want to hear, I want to hear your favorite story, your favorite story from your perspective of me on the field and off the field as well. But, I, but I'm going to go first. My favorite story, obviously, is the Hail Mary, right? And I think, like, and I want to hear, I want to hear the play from your vantage point because I don't think, like, what people remember was when we called the play you weren't designed to catch the ball. Like, those trips left, Big Ben left, but you were the receiver on the right. And Coach Ozani called timeout, and he ended up switching you and Malone and moving you on the left. Because, like, yeah. Jawan's the jumper. Jawan's the jumper. Jawan going to make that contested catch. And then we went back out there, and I remember I looked at you, you and Krum. I was like, y'all just got to get to the end zone. Just get there. I'm going to put yeah. it up there. But just get there. And I literally still remember – I still remember – your hands like grabbing the ball and plucking out the sky for touch. I can literally see it from my bro, that's, bro. That was so crazy. Come on, like that. I I, live, I relive that moment over and over in my head all the time, like, all the time. And I just remember you going to get the ball, like do something. I just, I just, but anyway, man, yeah. That was a crazy night. That was a crazy night. No, but the one thing, the one thing though, where you were. Uh, I don't know if you remember this. You were so excited, and everyone's like carrying you off the field. And you know, and you know when you get excited, you kind of like black out, low key. You took the you took the hell mary ball, and you just like chucked it all the way across the field. I'm like, bro, that thing is that's history right there. We can't let that thing go. That's what I'm talking about, bro. When I had chucked it, I saw you go get it. I saw you go get the ball, bro. But I don't know. I was just. Exactly, man. I was just too hyped. I thought a coach or somebody had. I thought somebody from Tennessee had have it. You know, I know somebody from Georgia wasn't going to take it. So, no. Nah. Uh, so where? So where is the ball now? Dog, where, where is, is the ball? I got, I got it. It's back at the crib. It's back at the parents' group. I got it. I got it. I when when he I threw it, it, I was like, Jawan don't want it. So I'm gonna, I guess I'm gonna just take it home. That's cool. That's cool with me, man. It's ours still. It's ours. It's ours. Then, my favorite story off the field was, 
obviously, Hail Mary, boom, 5-0, and oh, beat Georgia at Georgia. It's lit. We get back to Knoxville. Like, the team goes out. Everyone's, like, enjoying it. But me and Jawan, we got to be on SportsCenter at 7 a.m. the next morning. So it's a live interview. So I pull up. I probably get there like 6.50. I barely make it myself. And they're asking me, hey, have you heard from Jawan? <laughs> they're like, yo, no one's heard from Jawan. Does anyone know where Jawan is? Did you see Jawan last night? I was like, last time I saw him was about 2.30 in the morning. I don't know where he is. Jawan pull up at 6.00. 58 and an unspecified car with some unspecified people <laughs> and guess that we go on there we go <laughs> we go on there we kill that interview man smacked it smacked it that was a perfect interview that's a, no you couldn't do it no other way like come on no bro, other bro. way come on bro so i gotta i gotta Real quick one, uh, that same room that you guys did that interview, and I, I worked for the athletic department in school for the broadcasting department of VFL Films, and we had, once a year, we would have our photo day, and that was like the big production day. We would bring, you know, f family members of staffers in there, donors would come by, I was kind of like, look at all that we can do. And I had spent, you know, the last day helping set up, and I'd come up with a playlist of clean music that we could play during the photo day while we had other people come in and, you know, play some music, get the guys hyped for their pictures. Jawan walks in and he sees me and somehow he knows that I'm playing music. And so he comes over to me and he goes, he's like, let me see your phone. And I look, I kind of like look over at Tom or whoever from VFL Films was doing the production. I kind of look and he kind of gestures like, sure, go ahead. We had all these old people standing back there, you know, looking, get, taking pictures. Juwan grabs my phone. First thing that comes out of the speakers throughout VFL. <laughs> and I was like, oh my. And he, start, he and DT start dancing. The footage is incredible, but I was like, oh my God, he's going to get me fired. I, I mean, I guess I was playing lame music, but I mean, you, you got the, the mood going and everybody else came in and started dancing and we got the shot, so it was I worth it. I don't know, man. You know, I just kind of love music, so it's just, I probably was in the dawn, put on a song. I knew it was going to turn it up real quick, you know. Yo, that quick. reminds me. That reminds me. My favorite memory. Bro, we were at the um, we we're at the Outback Bowl at the end of Juwan's freshman year. And uh, Juwan, Juwan and Preston, Preston I just put together like an EP. Uh, and so they were promoting it on all stations, Instagram, Twitter, whatever. They, and it was a banger. It was a banger. The Two feet? It was a banger. Two feet. Yeah, so we go to the hockey game. And we're just like, we're there like as at the bowl game. They got us sitting in the rafters of, of the stadium. We're walking in as a team. But they have like the pep rally before the game with the stage and everything. Um, and they got like a guy up there with a microphone hyping up like the local Tampa Bay Lightning fans and everything. Whole team's going up the escalator. I'm standing next to Coach Jones. Coach Jones turns around and he goes, why is Jawan and Preston on stage? Whole team turns around. <laughs> Jawan and Preston grab the mic and are freestyling their song two feet in front of the entire hockey crowd. With their Tennessee photos, I was like, only those two will figure out to get on stage, get the mic, and then drop their song promo while we're going to a local hockey game in Tampa Bay. It was legendary. You got to love it. Come on. Come on, baby. You got to love it. You should have hopped up there with it. I should have. I should have. I knew. I know that. I was, listening to Mal I was listening to the song with Malone literally like a couple weeks ago. I was like, it's still a banger. That thing still pop. Wow. You get in the car, yeah. turn, the, turn the music up. It's, it's still a banger. I want to ask you, Juwan, everybody obviously remembers the Hail Mary, but one of the other plays that Tennessee fans will remember is the trick play against Florida. Walk me through that week of practice and what your thoughts were and then getting into the game and executing it. I uh, just, I couldn't wait for him to call it. That's one, that's the first thing that come to my head. And, uh, you know, honestly, once you get to Florida from practice center in Knoxville, it's like all that goes out the door. It's like you're just sweating. We're so hot out there. You know, sweating. I just threw the man, threw the ball and 
So Dobbs take off, man. I and once he scored, it was just amazing. Got the big quarterback again, and you know we didn't win, but I also had a big tackle that game, man. So you know. It, it was fine, man. First game, first man. You had this tackle, tackle on the kickoff, right? You smacked him. Smacked him. I don't know who he was. I know he was. And my hardest part was, like, just completing the ball to you. Because, like, that's not, like, you're under center, but it's not, like, an easy throw because it's so easy. It's like, all right, I got to give him a good throw. And then my hardest part is, like, it's not like I always catch the ball. Like, I just got to catch the ball. And then we'll figure out what happens. But let me catch this ball. But once I saw the crease, I was like, I gotta get my boy a touchdown pass. I was like, I gotta, I gotta hit it. And so we ended up scoring. That was, that was legendary. That was, bro. You got out. I ain't going cut. That play was not your last time throwing a touchdown pass. Tell us a little bit about that touchdown pass in the Super Bowl. It's like the same play after I looked at it, like the same exact play, but uh, this. The moment, like, just knowing, like, being in that moment, nothing like it. Like, actually in the Super Bowl, like, I actually threw a touchdown in the Super Bowl. Like, I don't know how to feel about it, but I know it feels great. You know, that's all I do know. Did, did y'all staff, like, did they show, did they told you, did they tell you that they took the play from our play, or did they just come up with the play on their own? Man, they've been calling this play since I – since I got there and before I got there, you know, they okay. they got a specific name for it. It's been in the playbook. Oh, so they didn't take it from us? I thought, man, I thought they used you for inspiration, too. That's straight up. I thought, so. I thought, I thought. Well, who knows? Maybe. I don't know. You know who knows? Maybe. Maybe. But, man, like, I think, like, what people don't know is, like, people see you, obviously, on the field with how much energy and effort you play. But what people, what people don't know and, like, what is – what I've always been impressed by is like you have that same energy like on and off the field throughout everything you do. It's intense, it's it's but it's like it's intense, but you're having a blast doing it. And I think that's always something that I've always respected from you. Like since you got on campus, was like no matter what you do, you're gonna do it a hundred, but you're also gonna have a blast doing it. And it really shows like the way your teammates always have gravitated around you. And I obviously just love watching you put people into the Gatorade um, containers on the sideline because it's, it's hilarious every time. And to see you do it in the NFL now, too, that's what's, like, really impressive. Like, you're doing – you're putting grown men who are playing mortgages, got families, and you're just dumping them yes, into sir. the Gatorade on the sideline. Nah, yeah, straight up, like, thinking about that. It, yeah, that's like I'm really here doing it in the NFL, too. And, you know, so in my mind, somewhere in my mind, I always knew I could, but uh, – I always got to prove to myself first. And uh, that's about everything I do. I, I always got to prove to myself that I can do it there. I'm mean, just an over um, repeat, like just a recycle of just me, re like just proving to myself that I can do it uh, to a high ability. We've talked a little on this podcast about some rivalries, uh, schools that we hated. What is it about Vanderbilt that you hated so much? Um. Honestly, when uh, the head coach had left and went to Penn State, I was just like, and then I didn't get the same respect from the new coach. So it was just like, all right, it, it makes no sense. Um, but anyway, I didn't even think they were that good. I only wanted to go there to um, help them, you know. Uh, Jay Matt had left. That was the real reason I wanted to go to Vanderbilt. And then uh, when the new coach got there and went rocking with me the same, I was like, okay, well, Let's go right down the let's go right down the street. So so were you committed to Vanderbilt at one point? Uh yeah, I was. I was. I was. I was committed to Vanderbilt. I you was came with over James. To my side. Yeah, yeah I, did. I did. Yeah, and, and the thing is with um Vanderbilt is like their players, you know, the organization, like the way they just talk, it's like I I mean, I was with all that too. Like I'm with all that phys physicality and he just I just felt like he went rocking with me, so you know it's like it's cool. Tennessee's way better anyway. I knew that anyway, you know. But yeah, I just don't like Vanderbilt. All right, come on, like why? Why are they in the SEC? <laughs> why? Why? So one of my favorite memories and one of Vol fans' favorite memories has to be the Florida game, Dobbs senior year and Juwan's sophomore year. To give a little perspective. 
uh, Tennessee fans at the, up to this point over the last 15 years had been through multiple coaching changes. Florida, who's Tennessee's biggest rival, had won 13 straight games. The previous year in the swamp, we thought we were going to break through and Will Greer made an unbelievable play in fourth and 13 to beat us. The year before, we lost a brutal game. I think it was nine to six, only field goals in the Neyland. The boring Florida-Tennessee game ever. The worst, the worst ever. So we had all the hype going into this game. It was checkerboard Neyland, one of the most unbelievable atmospheres I'd ever been a part of. And that week, Dobbs, if memory serves correct, there was a lot of trash talk coming from the Gators. Well, so I think the trash talk started literally back at SEC Media Days where – you know, obviously the media is building up the big games throughout the season. Both of us going to the year are top 10 teams. And so they're already highlighting the match between us and Florida. Um, talking about the year before and the craziness of how that one ended. And so they're, they're asking us questions and we were told like, hey, don't give them any bulletin board material. So we're all cordial. We're saying, yeah, you know, looking for a great matchup. Each game is the same. All that typical stuff that players say. Florida, on their hand, took a whole different perspective they were out here talking smack saying that it, we were just lucky to even be in the game from the year before I think they started the uh, saying like have you ever seen a duck pull a truck it was by Quincy Wilson their left corner he goes have you ever seen a duck pull a truck the reporters go huh they go yeah me neither so all week leading up to the game you know the taglines it was um, college game day they were like, have you all ever seen a duck pull a truck? They're saying in their media, we're playing it off. But everyone knew like both teams had so much beef going into that game. Talk a little bit about the matchup that Jawan had with the DBT's Tabor. Yeah, so leading up, um, we talked about just like the matches with our receivers versus their DBs, Quincy being their more physical DB. And then Jalen Tabor, he changed his name to T's Tabor. I literally think the week of the game. Um, being their more quick twitch uh, matchup DB. And so we're, so all week, you know, Tease was talking smack to Jawan. I know Jawan, he don't take smack from no one. So he's talking smack too. And they're both posting some liminal shots on social media. So we knew, like, if we get a one-on-one -on -one matchup versus them two in the game, like me as quarterback, I'm like, I got to take that and see what happens. And I think that leads into Jawan. Come on, that's bad for me. You gotta love that one. Hey, you gotta love that. You one. made it dramatic because though. they talk so much, bro. Like you ducks well, pull a truck. Oh, they were talking. What? They were talking since um since the SEC media days. Talking. Man, man, that's the thing. I like to be cool. I like to be cool, and then you meet players like for the first time on the field. It's like you never even met me, but like if you make a play on me first, you talk to me crazy. So it's like. Can he be cool with you now? Like, you could have been cool with me off the field, like, or just been cool with me before the football game, but none of them do, ever. And so they act like it's just crazy when I got to dump them in the gutter or anything. Like, you know, like, you trying to, you trying to knock me out. Yeah, yeah. This is it is. business. T so, Taylor, though, that was, that was iconic. I remember, like, from my perspective, so going to the game, you remember, we hadn't really thrown a lot of just go balls. So I was talking to Coach Sheridan, and he's like, all right, we're going to call – we're just going to call two verts at some point in the game. Here's what this – is, this is what we're thinking when we're calling it. They're like, we, we like the Jawan matchup on Quincy on the left, and we like Josh Malone on tees. Because um, they were like, if Josh Malone gets on Quincy, Quincy's a little more physical, he could press him and hold him up from getting off the line. And then we obviously knew like uh, tees was – a little faster. So we're like, all right. So we get out there and you were matched up on T's and Josh Malone was matched up on Quincy. So I'm sitting there like, dang, like this is exactly the thing that we didn't that we said we didn't like. So I remember I catch the ball. I look left first. So I moved the safety and everything, but I just wanted to see Malone's release because it was a shorter throw. And Malone, like, no offense, we love Malone. But on this play, Quincy got him. <clears throat> Hemmed up at the line. So I'm like, all right, all right, I hope Jawan won. I look to the right. All I see is this from you. Hand up, man down. I'm like, oh, we got him. And then you made the most dramatic catch I've ever seen. Like, you said, go out with one hand and then tiptoe down the sideline. That was, that was live.
That was live. From, my heart almost I dropped. I just started playing with Sarah. Give me some slack, dog. That's slack. true. That was, that was what? Give uh, me some slack. Me 12 months in. At that point. Come on. You feel me? It felt good, though. We had to, we had to build a rocket. That's all that like. Rocking. Yeah. So I was... I was running a uh, camera after the game for the press conference and they have um, media availability for the guys after the game. And every single person in that media room was just waiting for Jawan to get there. And it was a little late and you know, I think maybe Dobbs had already spoken and, and we're like, where's Jawan, where's Jawan? We see this, boom, Jawan comes in the room shooting off a fake gun. Were you wearing gator skin boots? I think so, you went to the, the game. Skin boots. He warmed to the of game. Of course I had him. I had he had to. the suit with the gator skin boots to the game. We need a picture of that outfit because it was legendary. <laughs> the the entire pictures, media. Sure pictures of that everywhere. Plenty of places. Dude, he legendary. Right legendary. I'll never forget it. Unbelievable. Well, I want to I wanna pivot a little bit now to this opportunity that you guys have together. So, Dobbs, you've been obviously all around the country. And I don't want to say that this is – the first time in free agency where you've kind of gone to a team where the expectation is not necessarily just to make the playoffs, but honestly, the expectation with the 49ers is the Super Bowl. What is that transition like from going from not knowing where you're going to be to now being on a Super Bowl contender? And Juwan, tell him, tell Dobbs a little bit about just kind of the culture in the locker room and what it's like in San Francisco. Yeah, Dobbs, you know, it's kind of like, you know, what he gets from me. Like, I'm my same, I'm, I'm the same uh, owner off the field. And that's kind of like the 49ers uh, organization. Um, everybody just comes to attack the job to do their best and, and Dodds fits straight in. They don't, I never seen them sign anyone that doesn't fit our culture. So that's smooth. And I think that that's what I was most excited about to be around a place that's built up, has gone to the dance, you know, um, has that consistent culture. And I got a chance, obviously, we played y'all last season. So I went up against you guys, watched a ton of the film, know of obviously the players there. But then last week, getting a chance to go out to the complex and just feel that culture was exactly what I want to be a, be around. You know, at this stage of my career, I mean, like you want an opportunity to get to the get to the dance, like okay. in whatever aspect, whatever role that takes just to taste it. And so to join a team that's done it, man, like, my mentality is like whatever I can do to help get back there and then go from there, right? Like I understand, you know, Brock's the guy, like, and Brock's been balling. It's been really cool to see what he's been doing. So however I can contribute to the room, you know, that's my mindset and that's my mentality. So I'm excited, man. And obviously to have a familiar face, like it's cool. Like Jawan's out here in Dallas. We got a chance to throw a couple times before free agency, not knowing what was going to happen. But then today we're out there throwing and Juwan's like, all right, this is this route, this is what it's called, this is how we run it. Like we're talking ball, getting into the playbook um, so that when we get to OTAs, man, we can hit the ground running. So I think it's going to be it's gonna be a lot of fun. Like, I don't think. I know it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, oh, yeah. I'm excited to get around that culture. I'm excited to get around that good weather. Not excited about the taxes, but we can Can't figure that all out in the end. <laughs> Definitely right about the taxes. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Juwan, you got any advice for Dobbs on uh, on places to stay? I know that rent is crazy in San Francisco. Uh, you know, if you want to, you know, I, my second year in the league, I stayed in the hotel with all the guys. So, we can save some, save some cash there. Um, you know, uh, just focus on ball. The, That's all you got. That's all you got. You, stay you in stayed hotel, in the yeah. hotel the entire year. Yeah, bro. Yeah, save on some dollars, man. And then, you know, got free Wi Fi. Yeah, got housekeeping. We got <laughs> free breakfast, all of them, bro. What else? Hey, don't tempt me now. We're gonna be neighbors in that hotel this year. Tell me, yeah. After we, you know, after we win these uh, playoff games, you know, we yeah. So having to, you know, have one of those uh, hail mary nights. Yeah, right on. We can make it on time, bro. We might if we we do that. We might be able to 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 get the Airbnb for the weekend or something. <laughs> All right, you can do that, too. You can do that, too. All right, Juwan, so, so wrap this up. I know we got OTAs coming up. But before OTAs, April 12th, we got my VFL golf tournament. I know you were a first-time attendee last year. Are we going to see you back out there this year? Yes, you will. You're going to be out there. 
All right, Cinema, I'm looking forward to seeing you April 12th, Tennessee National, where we get a chance to hang out with each other and also all of our dudes from back at school. We talk about some old memories, man. It's going to be a good time. So I'll see you there. Definitely will. Can't wait to be there, bro.